Any designers in the house? All right. Any developers? All right. Uh, who's everybody else? <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, so in order to, to fully understand where we're at uh, with digital product design at the moment, we need to kind of understand where we're coming from. So a bit of a history lesson for you guys. Anybody remembers this? Yeah? Raise your hands. Who knows what's skeuomorphic design or realistic design? All right, a couple of hands there. Anybody want to want to say it out loud? All right, sorry. Uh, so basically, skeuomorphic design started uh, a while back. Uh, maybe two. Was anybody online in 2001? Raise your hands. 2001. So those of you who remember, okay, work out. Those of you who remember, uh, in 2001, uh, web was uh, a really different place compared to what it's now. Uh, all of the major social networks weren't, weren't there, so uh, MySpace came out in 2003, uh, Facebook 2004, YouTube 2005. So 2001, it was just message boards, uh, Google search, uh, IRC chats, and uh, not, not much else. So basically only, only geeks were online, only the people who could actually use the, the web were online. And with, uh, with uh, of course, Facebook, MySpace, and who else, uh, many, many more people started coming online. And uh, not all of them were as, as geeky and as, as proficient in using computers and web. So for the first time, designers and developers kind of uh, found a challenge. Uh, they needed to educate the users uh, into how, how they can use the digital interfaces. So somebody was clever and, oh sorry, somebody was clever and got the idea that uh, maybe we can emulate uh, what we see in the physical world and uh, apply it on digital interfaces. So, for example, if something was a button, we would make it look as, a, as an actual physical button, uh, adding shadows, gradients, making it 3D, making it textured, lights was there. And a couple of factors also helped. Uh, so, uh, internet speeds got better, design tools got better, uh, screens, uh, computer screens got better, so a couple of things helped there and it really gained in popularity soon. Uh, all of the interfaces were basically imitating uh, realistic physical objects and some of them got really far, so basically they were pretty much little masterpieces and of course uh, someone always takes it too far. So basically, everybody got on board with the realistic design and uh, uh, started abusing it. Uh, things like letter textures and stitches um, basically took it over the, over the top. And kind of the ori original intention behind realistic design was lost. Uh, for example, these letter stitchings here, these are just ornaments. They, don't serve a, a purpose of, it, it is not an interactive element basically. So, and uh, developers, obviously this is a, a, a lot more difficult to, to actually develop and it's not very responsive, it's not very, uh, there is a massive uh, uh, like overhead in, in file sizes and, and everything. So basically a new style started to emerge. And this slide says 2013, but basically 2013 was when uh, skeuomorphic design was already dead. Uh, it started about 2011. Uh, a new style started to emerge called flat design. So what is flat design? Everybody knows it. It's basically everything that skeuomorphic isn't. Uh, shadows are gone, textures are gone. Uh, 3D, um, 3D representations are gone. It's just gradients, topography, icons, and and shapes. So, anybody maybe does anybody know uh, what was the first major operating system that uh, implemented flat design? 
Windows, yeah, almost. Uh, not Linux, except if you don't come for the for the terminal. So uh, uh, it was it was uh, Android 3.0 uh, Honeycomb. It's an odd uh, system. It was only used on tablets, and uh, it is really uh, from now. Uh, it is really obvious why it first uh, arrived to tablets. Uh, tablets have uh, two orientations: portrait and landscape. They have many form factors, and it's um, it's much easier for developers to develop something in flat designs. So uh, for uh, and it's a lot more necessary on tablets. So basically, uh, I mean, it's still not fully flat, but we're kind of working towards it. Uh, in Android uh, 4.0, they took it a, a step further. So this is this is Holo Team. Oh. This is Holo Team, so it kind of gotten flatter and flatter. Uh, Windows Phone followed by in in 2012. Anybody used Windows Phone? Yeah, all three of the guys are here. <laughs> so yeah, Windows Phone. I don't know. Uh, it flopped, but I think designers liked it. It's basically the most sophisticated. Uh, UI in, in graphic design terms. Uh, it's just beautiful typography and icons, so it's really kind of Puritan. But that's probably the reason why it wasn't so popular with the users. It was kind of boring for everybody else. So there weren't many users, there weren't many developers, and, and it flopped, unfortunately. Uh, and iOS came late uh, in 2013 redesigning the iOS 6 uh, into iOS 7. Anybody remembers Johnny Ive redesigns things? Yeah, one guy, all right. So, uh, basically, iOS 7 wasn't too well received. It was a bit confusing. Uh, so some of the labels were misinterpreted as buttons and vice versa. It wasn't completely clear what, what was going on. So uh, the style kind of the flat design style evolved a bit further, and we've came to what we know today as as this modern. Someone calls it flatty. Someone calls it flat-ish design. And uh, what is that? Well, it's basically flat design, but uh, helped with some shadows and some depth. Uh, but without any textures. So there's depth, there's blur, there's shadows, uh, textures are gone, glosses are mostly gone. Uh, so all the while, uh, we had this evolution and, and design, a parallel evolution was happening. So devices people use were getting smaller and smaller and like more diverse. And also, how we use the devices changed a lot. So, uh, for example, while we were using, and still, when we use desktop computers, it's usually uh, to create something or to do a piece of work. So it's kind of a, a, a longer session. We sit in front of a computer, probably too much, but maybe four hours at a time. And as we progress towards more, more portable devices, uh, sessions shorter, get shorter, and uh, but they are uh, they are more often. So, for example, when, once we leave the computer, that's it. Our user, once the user leaves it, uh, he is gone for us. We have no mean of of reaching to him. And as we progress towards the the more uh, smaller smaller uh, media's, uh, they are more readily available. <laughs> Uh, but the the sessions are a lot shorter. We check our phones maybe 500 times a day, but we only use it for a second or two. So this is like a, an example of, of desktop uh, software, uh, desktop software piece. So this is, I think, some audio software. Uh, I think it's Cubase, but. Uh, what we see here is one screen with hundreds of options. And uh, that just doesn't cut it in the mobile world because nobody has 
the attention spans or time or willingness to invest into into deciphering a, a screen like this. So we moved from from one screens with hundreds of options to uh, basically hundreds of screens with one or two options. Um, basically, uh, uh, any mobile app has has many many screens that only offer you a choice at a time because. Uh, well, basically because of everything that I said before. <laughs> so, what became increasingly important uh, with increased number, numbers of screens was how we move from, from screen to screen. And I think this basically became like the, the next skeuomorphic design. Everybody is trying to do like really crazy uh, screen transitions. And it will probably um, get old pretty soon. But uh, we still need uh, means to, to transfer from, from screen to screen. So, uh, yes, basically, uh, user's attention is the currency that we're spending now. It's, it has to be treated with, with the greatest respect um, and it kind of uh, requires a shift into the way we think about interactions. Uh, let's say, for example, I'm using an app to book movie tickets. Uh, even though I'm uh, trying to, I don't know, choose a movie, uh, pick a time slot or select seats, what I really want to do is none of those things. What I really want to do is go and see the movie and all of the choices and screens in there are just friction between me and the movie. So basically unless your app is a game or some kind of content to be consumed, all of your users would rather be doing something else. So you can tweet this. Uh, uh, it's already uh, becoming this, uh, I mean already, it's been for, for a while now, uh, this kind of approach is being adopted more and more, so for example this is a, an iOS 10 uh, search screen and what we see here is that we can uh, access uh, a lot of data and a lot of actions from the apps without even going into the apps. So, for example, I can see that uh, where's my parked car, or what's nearby, or what's the weather without actually going into, into any of the apps. So this kind of uh, reduces the importance of UI design by itself even more. There is no, I mean, there's a system design, but uh, as far as the app makers or app designers are concerned, there is no UI design here. And... Uh, it can even, I mean, there are trends that are taking it even a step further. So this is uh, Google's assistant. And uh, all of the interaction is done uh, by a chat, a chat interface. So a lot of the work uh, has shifted from creating pixels and creating designs and creating colorful stuff to actually thinking about how the, how the interaction will unfold uh, how the conversation goes in this case. And uh, it is also uh, it is also validated by a Google Trend Search. So the blue line is user interface and the red line is uh, user experience. And we can see that in the last five years the gap is getting really smaller and smaller. And I think uh, in the next five years uh, probably there meet at some point and then user experience will take over. So, uh, uh, new IOs. So basically, if we uh, look at a person as a, as a system, right now as human beings in 2016, we have, uh, if we look at us as a, as a system, we have many inputs, so we consume digital contents via video, we consume music, we read a lot, we do all kinds of stuff, but our outputs are, are very limited, so we only have tiny uh, phone screens to get the stuff that's in our heads or in our thoughts uh, outside, so uh, future will require uh, additional outputs uh, for, for users. 
so it's happening already with, I don't know, uh, stuff like Google Now or Siri, where we can talk to our phones, but it needs to get a lot better, and it will need a lot of uh, interaction designers to, to get better. Um, additional outputs uh, can also be uh, location, so uh, for example we've seen uh, in the iOS um, lock screen example that uh, location, uh, that nearby stuff is uh, location dependent, so without user actually doing any of the inputs, a system is already figuring out that we're in a certain place and offering a certain Stuff. Another cool example uh, for location input I found is, uh, I don't know if anybody was lucky to, to drive a Tesla. Nobody, no, not even me, unfortunately. So uh, uh, you can adjust your ride height in a Tesla. So for example, if the road is really bumpy or whatever, if you have a steep driveway, you, you can adjust your ride height to, to a higher or lower. But um, it remembers it, so basically whenever you're at the same place again, uh, the car automatically adjusts uh, its ride height. So that's kind of that's cool, and that's an example of, of a location-aware system. Uh, time is also becoming a, a new input. I mean, it has been for a while, but uh, new systems uh, really need to utilize it a lot. For example, automated houses know when you're leaving, when you're coming back, they will turn off heating and our safety systems automatically, so time is, is another input. Uh, context as well. Uh, uh, for example, you've probably used Airbnb, uh, and what I, like my killer feature uh, of Airbnb is when you're abroad and you're roaming and you uh, don't have an internet connection, uh, all of your Airbnb messages arrive uh, via text. So that's like a, a good example of a, of a really, uh, really context aware uh, system. So basically, that's it for me. Thanks everyone. <laughs>